Hello everybody. It's me, Shannon LaBruyere. Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I am alive and loving it. Ooh, Martha wants to join, which is just what I want. All right, Martha, hold on. Bad. Hi. Anytime now, Martha's coming on. And there you are. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am great. All right. So while we're waiting for people to pop on, because we're just getting started, how was your Thanksgiving? It was really well. It was really fun. We had we did it last Sunday, but we had a really good time. So it was it was really nice and relaxing. All there. All the What's that? All of the family there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All the family were there and a few extras that we bring in and yeah, it was a good time. How was yours? You know, it was wonderful. For the first time, I didn't do anything in advance and I did everything the day of and my daughter and my daughter-in-law helped me and my son made a dessert. <coughs> Hi Hans, glad to have you. Laura, Mwah. you're here. Gosh, I love seeing people jump on. Hi Albert, welcome. And Martha, I don't know, can you see who's popping on? Do you see any of your folks? Can you tell when they're there? I don't know what you can see. I can't see them, no. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a bunch of them. They're all there. and They're, they're loving you. They're sending <laughs> hearts. Well, the holidays, Martha, bring out to me, the holidays immediately make me start thinking about giving. So giving to my friends, to my family, my co-workers. Um, it's just the season of giving. Once Thanksgiving hit, we're just... And I also start thinking about the way that I respond. Uh, I'm going to start with a story. So welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. And I'm going to tell you a story about when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And my mom, and we, I'm the oldest of six. So there were six of us in the house. My mom takes us all up to the kitchen and we of the family off of the Christmas tree. And we sure it was a family that had a mom and some kids that were a lot like us. Go ahead, Martha, tell them to cut it out. What? I, I'm sorry, Shannon. Hold on just a second. I can't I'm hear. I'm, I'm having trouble. I can't hear. I can hardly barely hear you tonight. I don't know why that is. I wonder why. Is but. it? Let me see. Does that help at all? Can you hear me? A little bit. I'm having trouble here. Okay, hold on. Well, Lord knows I am not good at tech. Hunter. Hi, Hunter. Welcome. Everybody, uh, hard to hear. So, can you hear Martha? Can you guys hear Martha? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Can, I don't, yeah, I. There's a little background noise here too, so I don't know. Can you guys hear? I'm not sure what's causing that. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna, um, hold on a second. Don't worry about it. Sounds like background noise. I wonder if it is because of your end, there's stuff in the background. Can you hear, hear me now? All right, thumbs up if yeah. you guys can hear me now. It's her background I, noise. Okay, good, so it's going. I can hear you. Awesome, okay. All right, so, gosh, I had a rivet story. Where was I? I'm still breaking up. All right, hold on, folks. I'm going to get bold here. I'm going to see. Lord have mercy. I'm going to see if I can get this phone case off. Martha, entertain them for a second. I might have to go and come back. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now, folks? Is it better? Hard to tell. I don't want to waste too much time on that. It's not horrible. Don't worry, says Hunter. All right, I'm going with it. All right, so. Can you see me? Can you hear me? You guys are awesome. Ah! All right. So when I was 11, 12 years old, oldest of six kids. My mom hauls us all up to the fire station. We get a, a name, a family name off a Christmas tree at the fire station. Couldn't wait. 
we went out and went shopping. We bought each child a gift and we put ourselves in their place. Like, what would they want? And we picked out really good stuff, really good toys. And then my mom said, you know what? That mom needs something. What should we get her? And we all put our heads together and we ended up with fuzzy slippers because every mom needs a pair of fuzzy slippers, right? And took the, we wrapped them all at home, put them all in a big laundry basket. And my mom drove that back up to the fire station to give to the Goodfellows, which was pretty awesome. And that was on a Friday. And then Saturday morning, there was a knock at our door and a fireman and one of the good fellows was standing there with a basket for us. Put in our name as a needy family to get a basket from the good fellows. And I can remember thinking, we don't need a basket. <laughs> we, we gave a basket. Yeah. But we did need a basket. We right. did need a basket. But my right. mother planted this idea in our heads that we always had enough to share with someone else. And so right. that was my first like up close and personal realization that charity exists and that I was on the receiving end of charity. And I've got to tell you, I didn't feel bad about it. I felt I felt kind of good about it because I knew how much joy we had had getting that basket together for that family that we were going to give to, right? So right. I came away from that experience thinking charity is a really good thing. Right. Now, I have a friend, Martha, who was very, very poor, came from a very large family. They lived down south. And her experience with charity was that it always came with a price. Gifts sometimes, but in her community, the people who gave the charity also wanted to make sure that the kids who got it knew they got it. And they extracted a price. And the way she views charity is totally different. She doesn't want to receive it. She doesn't mind giving it, but she gives it in totally different spirit than what I do. And it, that contrast got me to thinking, what's the difference? And Martha, I think the difference is honor. When I gave gifts with honor, I could receive gifts with honor. And I know, in your experience, you've got a lot of history, um, for one, um, working with nonprofits, but also just working at dinner in the park with homeless people. Right. Martha, tell me your take on that idea of honor and how we give. Well, I mean, I, I, think, I think what you say is important in that, in the spirit in which you give, right? It, it's about, in order to get, you know, when we want to give and we want and we we see some a need that we feel like we are called or we want to fulfill um a lot of the attitude has to you know the attitude from of, of a pure heart we're going to give to this person not expecting anything in return not expecting any benefit um we're just going to give and if it comes back to us fine if it doesn't fine either way mm -hmm. we're we're just going to give so a lot of it starts with the attitude but i think the other side of that is our spirit of reception. Uh -huh. And in order to receive something from someone, you have to be vulnerable. And vulnerability is hard. Vulnerability is tough for all of us. And it's tough, it's tough to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, especially during around the holidays, because there is so much vulnerability. Um, you know, things and maybe families that haven't worked out correctly or things that people struggle with and, mm -hmm. or, or not correctly, but maybe the way we wanted them to, you know, with our families and stuff. And, and it's yeah. hard to be vulnerable. It's hard. Our world doesn't, doesn't teach vulnerability. And so that's part, um, you know, I think it, that spirit of receiving and being able to recognize that, like you said, 
I recognized that we had a need and it was okay that someone else came along and met it for me. Yes. Um, you were vulnerable and you were, and you were open to that vulnerability, but a lot of people aren't right. Yeah. And so that's what, and then, so then when we give with honor, we have to give in a spirit of I'm letting it go. It's gone, yeah. whether it comes back or not, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And it, we have to give in a spirit of vulnerability and we have to take in a spirit with a spirit of, of not just vulnerability, but that lends itself to the honor. Gotcha. All right. Does so that make sense? It, it does. Yeah. Because the, when we give, it's actually a two way street. Right. <laughs> Even if we feel like it's one way, if we're not open to that being a two way street, that there's vulnerability on both ends. I think we really miss out on some of the blessing of right. giving. Um, I'm thinking right. about um, when I go by the Salvation Army uh, red kettle and I drop in some change, um, I can drop it. I can drop that change in for somebody who's less than me, or I can drop that change in the bucket for somebody who's deep down the same as me. And that's a little bit scary. Right. <laughs> I, right. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to right. be that person. I don't want to need that. I don't want to, right. but by acknowledging that humanity that I'm giving to, I feel like it makes me acknowledge my vulnerability too. So right. I think that's kind of what you're saying. So, right. so Martha, tell me, how do I help somebody like a homeless person that is a little bit scary not sure, not sure what they're dealing with, not sure. It seems like no matter what I give, it won't be enough. I can't give them a house. So help me understand in this, in this season of giving, how can I give and feel good about it? And how can I do it in a way that's actually going to be meaningful to the people I'm giving to? Right. Um, I think for me, um, I think my journey with Artists Helping Homeless um, has taught me a lot about that. Um, you know, I have to say when I first started out, um, when I first started doing Dinner in the Park, it, it, it was a little bit, it, it was different. And, and it was a little bit, I, I can't say that I was scared. Mm -hmm. um, I was more so, I, I went into it kind of like a... Um, you know, <laughs> you know, Dana Carvey, church lady. I went in into, you know, like, here's a good little church lady. She's going to go down to the dinner in the park and, you know, bless all the homeless people, you know, um, those poor souls, you know. Right. Um, and I saw poor. them as, I, I saw them as people in need. And I think there was a, there was a, there was a few years ago where there was a, an unusual Sunday, an unusual time at dinner in the park. And, it wasn't just our group that was giving. There was another group down there that was that that brought some extra things that they had. They were giving. There were some. There were the guy, the people in the line. As I got to know the people that came through that line every month, and and sometimes you see the same faces over and over again. Yeah. I got to know their stories. I got to know who they were. I got to know where they came from. I got to yeah. realize that there, but for the grace of God, go I. I mean, they were very much. They were. They weren't homeless people, they were hungry people. And it changed the perspective. They were simply people that needed a food, that needed a meal. And I had the talent of cooking. And so why not give my talent to where it was needed, right? I, I love to cook. I've always loved to cook. I'm, I'm good at it. So, and we're to use our talents. Isn't that the whole like, you know, so why not apply, why not simply look at it as an exchange? I have a talent, you know, and they have a need and the, when the two come together, it makes it work. And, and that Sunday, like it, there was just, it was just an unusual spirit about the place. And it, and it, and it was that it was, people were hungry, people had food, people had clothing, people had whatever it is that someone needed. And everybody just, it, there was just like this air of just generosity, but there was all on both ends, right? Yeah, because generosity isn't just about giving. It isn't just about giving. It's also about receiving. Yes. And so see, and they received generously. We gave generously, and it all just, and and suddenly it was almost like you know that 
that veil, you know, like it was opened and suddenly I saw it from a totally different perspective. You know, I'm just, I'm just somebody who likes to cook and I cook once a month and I take food down and hungry people show up and they eat. Yeah. And it's, and they've become our friends. So it's it's just a different, yeah. What you're describing, Martha, is you started by seeing them as people in need. These people, Right. right? And then that transformation happened when you just saw them as people. Right. 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 You got to know just, them. You got to know their right. stories, got to feel that. Yeah. Right. You, that is the perfect example of honor. When I talk about right. giving with honor, it's not giving to a, a cardboard cutout. Right. I, I'm sharing what I have with a person and I don't right. have to extract a price. And I don't know, I was thinking today about the three wise men and the gifts that they brought to baby Jesus, because tis the season, right? And I was thinking, these kings came from afar and brought very generous gifts to, to what amounted to a bundle of potential. They looked at this baby and they gifted that baby as if that baby were already king on a throne. You know, they they saw potential there. They saw what that person really was. And I was just mulling that. How many times do I give to people and I look past them without being with them and seeing who they are, making them connection that says I see and you might not look like all that right now you might be in a tough place but I see the person you are you know does that make sense Mm -hmm. that acknowledge yeah yeah you see the you see the god like you see the you see the godlike character that is in with all of us I mean yeah when when god formed us from the depth from the dust of the ground and he you know man everything else he spoke into existence but man he actually touched and he actually created he actually formed and then he took it a step further and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life right there's more to us than a simply a simply something that's been spoken into existence there is a spirit that's deep within all of us that longs to be revived and when we look past that outer shell when we look past that whatever it might be that is um holding people down and we see within them that potential that spirit that life and we acknowledge that yeah that's when miracles happen that's when things just get really good you know yeah and we're getting all kinds of thumbs up and hearts and Thank you, everybody who's been chiming in. I love seeing it. Emma, welcome. And I see Carol's up there. Um, I see Hunter's here. Uh, I, yeah, I can't tell who else everybody is, but so glad you're joining us. I'm talking with Martha Janes, and we're just exploring this idea of honor and charity. And now, Martha, you've dealt with institutional charities quite a bit. Um, is there honor in giving that way? Is, is oh there yeah, there's giving through yeah. institutions, not just being in the park and, and scooping the the right. scoop. But tell me a little bit about how honor gets displayed when you're giving through an institution. You know, um, it the institution. You, you know, it's it's the institutions have missions. They have they have. You know, I when I did my MBA, when I studied my MBA, I studied um, social entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship is basically the exploration of a for-profit business that fulfills a social need. Um, really, it in a lot of ways, it's it's nonprofits. Like we don't like to talk about nonprofits that way. We like to pretend that nonprofits are all about you know they have no need other than the mission. <laughs> when that's not true. Um, you know, there's just like in any other business, there's overhead in nonprofit, yeah. Um, yeah. in the nonprofit sector. And when you give to a nonprofit, 
you're not just giving to the mission, but you're giving also to that overhead and the cost of that business doing business, right? Yeah. But either way, but, but in the end of it all, there's honor in that someone has acknowledged that there is someone else in the world that whether it be the, what, what, you know, whether it be the Red Cross, right? Red Cross has said, there's a lot of people in the world that at, different, at one time or another in their life are going to need some blood. And we, and, there's all, and we have a way to remove blood from people and give to the people when they need it, right? Yes. Um, and, and that's simply nothing more than, I mean, it's just, an, it's just an exchange, right? So whether, whatever charity you pick, right? Whatever, there's honor in that. And because it's the same basic exchange, someone sees a need, they start a mission to fulfill that need. Yeah. And then when you give to that, whether, even if it's, even, whether you give of your service, whether you give of your time or whether you write a check, right? Yeah. You're right. giving honor and you're providing a way for that organization to keep running and keep fulfilling right. that mission, whatever that mission may be. Yeah, so so basically when you're talking about the Red Cross, for example, I'm, I'm picturing Martha and a bunch of her friends going out to the park and trying to draw blood and somehow get that to people who need it. And that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Sometimes you need the institutions, right? So um, yeah, what, no matter how we're giving, it's the way we give it that matters. Acknowledging that this is for people, going to people. Hunter had a question. She, she wondered, how did you have the courage to branch out from the organization to the face-to-face the -face interaction with people? She works with special needs people. And, and she said, that, that's a, a leap that takes some courage. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, I, you know, that's funny because... Um, I don't, I don't see it as that courageous, right? I just see it as the natural, mm -hmm. the natural progression, I guess you would say. Um, yet when I, when I worked for for-profit business and I worked for retail, I did a lot of restaurant and retail experience and I, I worked for for-profit for a long time. For instance, one thing that I consistently saw was really qualified individuals that weren't getting hired okay to, for whatever job it might have been mm -hmm. uh, because their interview skills their maybe their resume maybe they were there they had a lot to learn before they could get there right so mm -hmm. walking in the door they were walking in from a they were they it, the playing field wasn't level okay and i noticed that time and time again and it frustrated me as a retail manager because like a lot of times i would see someone that i might want to hire mm -hmm. but because when they walked in that door everything wasn't in order and and my company had guidelines i had to follow yeah so it to me it was like there's got to be a way for business to conduct business and do it honorably mm -hmm. and be able to acknowledge people of walks of life developmental you know yeah. developmental levels whatever they might be working with um yeah. and give those individuals a chance to succeed in the way they want to succeed mm -hmm. um so i mean i guess it was just a matter of like just knowing that it, it got to the point that i couldn't just sit and think about it anymore and and <laughs> say gosh i want to make this i want to i want to somehow find a way to fulfill this need yeah I, I guess when you're uncomfortable level, when you get more uncomfortable where you're at mm -hmm. than jumping off into the unknown, uh -huh. when what is known to you is more uncomfortable than what is unknown, you yeah. make the leap. I mean, yeah. I, and I, I guess I said that all the way around to say that's no, no. It's just that yeah. simple, it's, you it's, know? Sometimes that's the route that our brain takes, right? We don't just jump in right away. But yeah, it's this idea of staying where I'm at is more uncomfortable than going to that thing that I'm not quite sure. Um, right. It doesn't necessarily take courage. Sometimes it's because, dang, it's, I'm getting antsy. I got to move, right? Um, right? And Hunter's got a load of questions. And un sadly, folks, I'll just have to apologize for my lack of technological savvy because I'm doing all this on a state-of-the-art iPhone success. 
And for some reason, I can't scroll these comments. So once they disappear, they're gone. So if you're saying something riveting, comments are flying by. So we'll definitely get back. I'm, don't keep commenting. Um, we'll get back and answer them. And I know, Mark, you'll go through and, and do a little responding too. But um, thank you so much for sharing your perspective on the honor charity thing. Um, I'm, next week, I'm going to be talking with Lara Shovlin, who is the executive director of Helping Hands Gifts, which is a local organization that connects businesses with charities so that they can do good. Um, and I'm just so intrigued by what how people think when they're in those kinds of roles, because you see a lot of needs. Um, and how do we deal with them? And how do we do it in a way that's respectful? Um, when I think about my friend who received charity, she got shoes. Um, she got a dress. But that is all she got. Yeah. When I got my basket from the Goodfellows, I got a sense of belonging. I got a sense of being cared for, of being part of the fabric of a community. Um, growing up, me and my family were part of a, a church that gave to us generously without extracting a cost. Um, I, I One person in particular I can remember gave our family gifts one year that, that were every bit as beautiful as what she had given her own children. And I was honored by her generosity. I want to be that kind of a giver. Whether I'm writing the check or I'm dropping it in the Salvation Army bucket or I'm out there in the park or in the school dealing with special needs, whatever it is. Um, and I, I just wanted the people who tune in to Sunday Night Live to see that they can shift the way they look at giving and right. it opens up the world, not just for them as they give, but for the person who receives it. Right. Even if the person doesn't ever know it was them. There's right. something about the spirit of giving right. that blows it wide open. Right. right. You know, there's a concept in um, just theology. Um, they are much more, more so that when you give, you without without a that That is one of the proponents of the faith is that you are required to give, but you are also required to give. Not, re not in return, number one. But number two, oh, in secret, there. you that your oh. right hand, you know, like yeah. Jesus talked about it, right? Your right hand doesn't know what your left hand's doing when you do that, right. right? Right. But that is a very strong tenet of the Jewish faith, and yeah. um, it and it gives a dimension to giving. It 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 it, it gives a dimension to it, like. That is hard to describe. That's hard to, but once you get there and you, you really, you really give and you don't, you, it, it opens doors. You see things in a different perspective. It, there, mm. there's that spirit of it that, mm -hmm. you know, um, that God has created within all of us, right? That spirit of it, that just, it just, it, it changes it, it. And then it changes you in such a way that when, so, when you receive, you receive within that same spirit and it's, it, it's just, it's amazing. It really is when it all works together like that. Yeah. Well, Martha, you are awesome. You're one of my favorite people. I said that last time I had you on and I'll say it again. I just love you and I appreciate your honesty and how you think and how you've given us a different way to maybe see how we give during this season of giving. Is there anything you want to share with us about what's happening in Missouri and near in the St. Louis area. Is it St. Louis area? Kansas City area. Kansas Where are City. you at, Martha? Kansas City. And I know you're at a lovely place called the Farmer's Table. Is that it? What? We've got a little bit of a video delay. So let's. Yeah. Okay, go. Well, where I'm at right currently in my current role, is that where you're? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, just currently, I'm, yeah, I'm working with the Farmer's House here in Kansas City. Um, it's it's a local organization. Um, wonderful, wonderful organization. Very similar to what I what I what I've done before. Um, the 
the difference is, is that they drive their mission through social enterprise also. So they have a social enterprise. We have a farm. We have um, mark, farm markets. We have catering. We do. We have a cafe. We have a lot of different venues to get done what we do. Um, yeah. And we start working with individuals in high school um, and work you know, give them farm experience, early work experience. They work in the cafe, they work in the markets, they work at the farm, they work at all different types of jobs and all different types of level and all different types of industry, all focused on giving job training so that when they do graduate high school or they do go into the job market, they are ready to go. And um, it's a huge challenge, but I love it. I love every bit of it. I love what we do. Um, the organization itself was started by two families who had children um, with developmental disabilities and they just wanted something better for them. They wanted something different. And I, I love that kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, we have a need, we're going to figure out a way to make it happen. So it was really, yeah. it's really a great organization. I'm really excited to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing about it. And if you guys are in the Kansas City area, stop by the farmer's house. Um, it looked like they had some good stuff going for Black Friday. <laughs> some delicious, yummy stuff that was for sale. Um, and thank you all for joining me tonight uh, to get your little boost of motivation before we jump into the work week. It's my honor to serve you. Um, if you want to see me up close and personal and you're in the Detroit metro area, plan on coming to the Christmas tea in Rochester at Victoria's Victoria no, at the Victorian Rose Tea Room in Rochester. I'll be speaking there and doing a little bit of singing. <laughs> It'll be so fun. Um, and that's it. Keep the comments coming. We'll go through and check everything out. Um, Rosetta's here and saying you are awesome. And uh, <laughs> we agree with you, Rosetta. Uh, Zaddy. I love you, Zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, every one of you, have a very great night. I hope your Thanksgiving was wonderful. I'm grateful for all of you, and I wish you all the best. Have a great week. Mwah! Goodbye, everybody.